Hi everyone, McBeard here, back with another Commander's Horn deck guide for you. But first, I want to say thank you so much to everybody for helping me reach 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. That's amazing. It's hard to believe, but I also know that the work is just getting started. As uh, Gwent just continues to impress, the more I play, the more I kind of explore the meta that we're currently in right now. The new leaders still, it hasn't even been a full week yet. But we've been playing with a little bit of Gurnacora, and we have a—I have a couple more Meeve. Uh, I have at least one more Meeve video to share with you before we completely move on from Meeve. But I did want to—you know—don't want to stick on Northern Realms all the time because all these new leaders are really interesting, and Gurnacora is one of those leaders. Just a fantastic leader with a lot of push potential and a ton of tempo potential at the low, low end of the recruit cost scale down here. So. You can just get a lot done without committing a lot of resources, but I play a little twist, and that's Dragon's Dream. Before we break into the deck guide, I just want to let you all know that Thursday, February 7th, will be Commander's Horn episode 108 with my guest top 10 pro ladder players, Green Knight and Alessio1996, aka Ultraman, from Team Leviathan. It is my pleasure to be talking with these guys. Ultraman, also part of Gwentopa number 8 already, so there's lots to talk about, of course. This is a still developing meta. We're going to talk about what we might expect from uh, the qualifiers that's coming up this weekend. Maybe we'll try to find out, you know, what we might think is good. Although Green Knight might be not as interested in sharing his strategy because I think he's participating in it. But maybe we can squeeze, you know, some spice out of him. We'll see. We'll see. So I'll just go through each of the cards very quickly just so you guys know why I'm running them. Uh, basically, we have a lot of, we have a lot of, low provision cost drive units because they just generally work with what the deck is trying to do at all times. So that means we have Arcaspor, Necker, and Necker Warrior, uh, as well as Drowner, which is another thrive unit, but not just because it's a thrive unit, because it's a fantastic bronze card. Absolutely stellar. Two points on the body with thrive, plus you move a unit and you damage it by two, and there's no reach on this bad boy. I hope they don't completely destroy this card. In fact, I really think that the card is fine. Maybe it just needs some sort of row restriction for it to not feel really, really, really good for its recruit cost. But I just don't think it's... I don't know if it's a six-point card. I just think that it's just... Uh, it's a card that probably is getting a lot of plays. It's such a good card. Uh, Spores is specifically for the Monsters matchup, but let's call this an open flex spot. I was running into a lot of Woodland. Of course, I put Spores in my deck, and I didn't run into very many opportunities to play it. But usually, depending on the matchup, you know when you should mulligan this and not play it. But it is actually probably worth considering. Me personally, I was simply uh, going up against a lot of Woodland. And it actually helps when in the monsters uh, in the monsters matchup when they try to steal your spear tip with their Osral, you can cancel it out uh, and then go ahead and try to steal theirs. So you can do stuff like that. I think it's just generally a meta choice. This is a flex spot open at five. Alpha Werewolf, just another great thrive unit that uh, is immune. Wild Hunt Riders, we know great thinning, uh, great thinning card that is generally pretty easy to play because you're running higher bodied units and generally it's not that hard to play wild hunt rider in monsters especially if you're running boost units or you're running spear tip which we are uh cyclops what a great card this is i feel like this is appropriately costed i hope this card doesn't get any better or worse it's just so good five points in the body proccing almost every thrive possible procs death wish and its removal at the same time one of my favorite cards in all of monsters the faction is just cyclops is so good does so much i actually think i like cyclops more than drowner which is saying a lot because drowner is very good uh, Selena Harpy, there's one in the deck. Ignore the times two stuff because that's just my deck. That's like my deck. That's my collection. So look at the deck list afterwards to see how many uh, I have in each. But uh, I believe there's just one Harpy. Just a proc death wish. It's generally fairly useful because it's a five point body. It's almost always going to proc thrive at proc death wish. For all the reasons that you like Cyclops, this is also like that. But it's, you know, it doesn't actually give you removal as well. Now, Devana Runestone, a lot of people probably are wondering why I would be running this card, but generally I find that uh, this card is worth running because it, the Thrive units that you have, you're creating, essentially, you're just uh, just polluting the board with threats that are like these engines that they, they deliver low value to your opponent when they try to remove it. The Devana Runestone can give us any of those Thrive units or anything that can proc Thrive as well. Lots of units at four up. Uh, you can also get, you know, the Ice Giant if you're if you're lucky. You get the seven point unit, an extra Ghoul, although that's not usually good. But if you're not using Osrel to eat your Spear Tip, you can find Ghoul with this. Uh, you can find another Cyclops. You can find another Drowner. Uh, you can find a Death Wish unit that's good with the Cyclops or good if you need something for Bruce to consume. I just feel like I've never rolled this and felt like it didn't give me 
what it was worth, if not more. Um, and by more, I mean giving me a third bronze of, of very powerful bronze that I've used twice already. I actually really like this card, and I'm probably going to keep playing with it uh, in a Thrive deck specifically that runs Cyclops. Werecat, this can come and go, but I was running into, there's a lot of row stacking. It's This card is not great when you draw it in round three, but it's okay when you draw it in round one. Very okay, really, because Witches are prevalent. Against Nilfgaard, you might see a lot of Germain and Slave Infantry trying to get that Commander's Horn off. Werecat will stop this. In the Monsters matchup, you can just drop it against Neckers and just wipe out two Neckers right away, plus dropping a Thrive unit. It's a weird card. You can play this card at any given time in a round, and you're going to get extra value from it. And if you can proc it, it, it's that much better. I have thought about taking it out, but seven is seven's you know not that expensive for this effect, I don't think. Um, but I also think that this deck could use some consistency, and if I was adding Witchers, I would probably take this out. Uh, let's see here. Nivellin works with Dragon's Dream and works with Werecat and is a five-point unit on the play. Is just generally fine with what we're trying to do, and you kind of need to run it with Dragon's Dream. Your Grey is our lock. I just find it very useful to have at least one shutdown lock, plus the high body on Dora Gray. We can't really afford a Guara, but the locks against us aren't that important because we have so many engines. Uh, Weavis, Bruis, and Wisp, as we are running all three Crones. These are generally great cards. Bruis can be played at any time to proc a Death Wish that you might have. All of these ladies proc Thrive because they're all five-point bodies. Uh, Weavis is just fantastic to save a unit that you need to survive or to bring something up if you need to proc your riders. And of course, uh, Wispus, who we're looking at, can end up being just a huge piece of removal, generally being played for a ping of four or six, which is premium these days. Uh, Azrael goes without saying, usually for your own spear tip, can be used on your opponent's graveyard as well. Uh, Azrael could be a ghoul, but I do like the versatility of the graveyard hate. Having last say with Azrael, just the option of that is quite good. That's why I think consistency will really, really help this deck out. But I think that it's fine letting the bronzes do the work. Then you got the Dragon's Dream, the namesake of the deck, Dragon Fruit. This is right now being, I, I play this card in a couple of decks. I like it in this deck specifically because A, you have Drowners. B, Nivellin kind of just works as a big body in general. It's just a fantastic final play card and I love playing with it. What's the issue with it? Well, it can be removed, but once in 65 games, that's all I really have to say about it. I mean, I think that this card is just very good. People don't run clears. People don't run clears. It's expensive. You need consistency. I'm working on it, but I got great highlights, and you can call this one a work in pro progress. And of course, Spear Tip just rounds it out the top. 13 point body, procs all your thrives on the board, no matter how big they are. And of course, is food for Osril later and helps you make sure you get your riders so you don't have to rush out the riders. You just play your thrives nice and slow. Spear Tip usually gets you there so you can play the riders to steal. Generally, though, Spear Tip is just a card that's really hard to not include. However, if you didn't want to include these cards, I would say that instead of running Spear Tip, you could run something like Goliath or Young Spear Tip down here in the nine in the ten slot. Uh, this means Osrael is worse, but this also means you have a lot more provision points to play with. And when you have more points to play with, you can put in more thinning cards to make the deck more consistent. So if I felt like the thing is Osrael, Osrael chomping down on Goliath is generally, if you have the last say, it should be enough. It's very very rare that it's not enough. So there's options here that free up some provisions, um, which allow you to enhance some of these cards, maybe to the Witchers, maybe add Roach, maybe add something else that can thin. But I'm thinking about making it a little bit more consistent because when we hit the combo, man, this deck felt really, really strong. We we won a lot today. Uh, we just won a lot today. Really great red coin deck, kind of crazy red coin deck, and can hang out on blue coin. So only one time did we get pushed out on blue coin. Check out the highlights, my friends. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Thanks again for the 10K subscribers. Thanks, of course, to everybody over there at patreon.com slash commander's horn. And to everybody watching the stream over there at twitch.com, uh, twitch.tv slash McBearded. So we're streaming tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Commander's Horn, episode 108. Thanks so much for watching, my friends. And I'll see you next time. We're up against Eldane. It's it's Eldane versus Eldane. That's what they call me in Mexico. I mean, we can assume that these probably aren't going to live very long, but eh. is this hand okay? Let us sing the song of steel. Sing that song of steel. Sing that song of steel. Ah, fuck. Sorry.
Sorry, I forgot to play the fruit first. Always one double fed archer, right? It's always one. But maybe you don't have room for it if you're running traps. I shouldn't play the Neckers against traps. I should hold on to them because they're very good with traps. Blood and neck ends. Similian Vat. I'm gonna hold on to the other one for that reason, actually. The runestone as well. Do not a bam, bam, bam. Bam, bam, bam. Well, well, well. We get a little pass right here. Well, I guess we just runestone here for whatever. Uh, it absolutely doesn't matter, I guess. Take the thrive. Also think this is a great play into traps. <laughs> Mike said about the new Gwent Open in March. You better, you better believe I am. You should be following them on Twitter at no, Gwent. So the first trap we see, we try to tank with Spear Tip. I'll get it soon. Keep forgetting, because I know one of the crones, this crone isn't tracking the, the damage up, upgrade, right? It doesn't track, track it. It's just like a visual bug. That's always got to make sure. Which soundtrack is this? All Witcher. Now we will see who is weak. So yeah. Commander Sworn Podcast tomorrow live at 2 p.m. EST. Ultraman and Alessio. Sorry, Alessio, also known as Ultraman and Green Knight, top ten players on the Pro Ladder, join little old me in the Commander Sworn studio. It's not pitfall trap, but it could be, but it's not, right? It's not. It doesn't matter. If it is, then he's in the graveyard for Osrael. I didn't play the fruit first. Oh god, you guys must just you guys probably can't stand it. There are only two games where I've really been brutal with the fruit, but this one is one of them. And the one before it, I guess. Maybe three games. It was three games later. Uh, that's a pass. Or is it? Or is it a pass? Osrael doesn't have anything to work with. But I would have to play Osrael if I was going to commit to that. Which I am going to do. Could have been Serpent Trap, so I shouldn't have done that. Roam a little then. So he has to play a card, and then he's gonna get he's gonna get he's gonna get boomed down to at least. I mean, if he plays Aldane, he won't. He'll get at least six damage. I get six damage back here, so it's pretty good. Gambit's a terrible card. 
Oh, so I mean he's gonna move these guys or play Call of the Forest on one of them or that thereby losing the points of I mean I kinda get the three points anyway, right? Because he takes the three points off. The only oh. I mean he loses three points but gains two points. Looks like that other card isn't very oh, oh man. He's not gonna be able to get there. Sorry, I asked for more seventy seven. You people had enough, give me some more. Ah, oh, I clicked it. I clicked it. Sorry, man. If you watch that, I clicked it. I forgive you. This Four or five traps more towards Elf Swarm. Ah, uh, yeah. Who are we up against here? John Calvin, huh? John Calvin. Removal probably seems okay. We have the combo, too. Would we use it? We would. This hand's fun. Sounds pretty spicy. Admirable move. I'm impressed. Mm -hmm. Impressed, are you? Like, the cool thing about Gurnicore is that a deck like this could not get away with, like, this wouldn't be good in in Vintage Gwen because you wouldn't be able to play slow enough. It wouldn't be like Consume Monsters where you could play slow enough and still make up for it with a combo. What's up? Spicy. Spicy. Photomental with a three-month resub. Thanks for the streak. Thanks for the Twitch Prime love. The only nerf that I would ever want Drowner to get is a reach nerf. Or an opposite row nerf. Locking one of the Thrive units. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're good, still. We're on red coin, so we really, we play, we play Dragon's Dream here. And he's not going to see or stop the, that. He might get Osrel. Ah, uh, he got one of the crowns. Not even the worst thing. Was it the damage crown, though? Yeah, it was the damage crown. Ah, uh, the damage crown's a good one. Could be worse. I don't know. Now we just need to kind of just go buck wild here. Bam, bam. Because we, we want to be able to be, like... In a position where passing on the Dragon's Dream is very, very bad for him. Like here, if he can't make up the 10 points, he's going to have to pass on even. Time for it. Enough! Damn it, he gets he gets he gets just enough. He gets just enough. It's really important that he doesn't get there, right? But of course at this point he would always get there or else he'd pass. Still think it's worth playing it. There's no need to play it. Oh shit, we just get on evens anyway. Well, I think we just we're just gonna win this game, I think. I think that's just it. We're just gonna win this game. Calvin is not um I don't know if it's gonna be enough. We got the other crones, so things could be worse here. Uh we have the combo, which is fantastic. We have egg and consume. You could argue we definitely don't need all the consume here. Uh, the hand's just too good to uh, to think. I just don't think we lose. 
You should better go down too. Uh, I mean, we've won games where we've done that because it felt like there was no other choice. The thing is, like, once you know that you are going to be get down a card, you just have to play it out. You just have to try your best, play it out, try to get that card back because it's the only way you're going to win at that point. Passing on even is Obedience also not... Passing on even sucks because now my opponent's going to be down a card, right? So, <laughs> And that is hard to deal with when I have Dragon's Dream. A lock is very good as well. And there's a Werecat too. The Werecat's gonna be great when he drops uh when he drops Germain. Uh again, I don't think we need we need Osrael is what we would really like to see. Yeah. Never Osrael. I still think we're good though. No! All right, cool. That's fine. Hmm. We'll play. Um, we'll play Brewis next to eat the uh, the fruit. And as soon as he plays, uh, as soon as he plays Jermaine, we play Warcat. So we're playing. We're playing around Commander's Horn. Playing around Jermaine. We have anti-commander's horn and dragon stream, so it's just going to cancel that out. So you take commander's horn away from Calvit. It's not uh, where Calvit wants to be. So I feel pretty good about it. Losing on even is really bad still in play. That's why a lot of people pass when they have five cards on red. Actually, I don't know if what I said just made sense. This will help us kill the sergeant in the back. Should be so desire. Magusta, LOL, loves my podcast. When can you accept the new episode? Tomorrow, 2 p.m. live right here. You will see it in your dream. Hmm. Uh, it seems a little bit more worthwhile to kill with Cyclops, I think. And then we have a lock for Skellen. If he doesn't play anything worth locking, we're going to drop the Alpha Werewolf for that final thrive because we're going to, or, well, then there's the Werecat, I guess, but he's not playing anything. We need to wait for uh, Jermaine for the Werecat, right? Jermaine for the Werecat. So if he has, if he has Commander's Horn, Skellen, Slave Infantry, Slave Infantry, Jermaine, which would be a great hand right now if that's what he was playing. Letho Kingslayer. What are these crazy deploy units you're playing, my friend? Alba! Okay. You know what? I think, because I have to play Dragon Stream next turn. I mean, if he, if he was sniping, he would play the thing I need to lock next turn, right? I mean, I don't really think it makes a difference. I think I absolutely play this now. This way I can play Werecat last, perhaps. Iris. How about that shit, huh? How about that shit, Iris? Clears me with Iris, huh? It's uh, something. Weavis is bugged right now visually. That is something. That is something. Wow, we're just so far behind now.
I just think he's gonna give me something to lock that is gonna be worth more than the point, the one point. I sense your pain. I see your fear. Visual bug, swears he's doing it too. All is in place. There we go. That's what I wanna. That's what I wanna stop. Well, also, I can just move that here. Nah, it's just better for me to lock it, I think. Is it, though? Yes, it is. Because what could he play that I would need to lock? I'm not thinking. I do not mince words. On oh, it could be a Guara. Yeah. Could be a Guara. It's a good deploy. It's not a Guara. So we do have to get a fair amount of points, but maybe we get those points. We have Thrives. Scurry away before it's too late. Ah, I think we get it. <laughs> oh, baby, we get it. With the clear, huh, too. How about that? Huh, how about that? And we get it, too, with the clear. Woohoo! One pointer. Man. Yeah, that was good. Share that seven month anniversary. What's up, Boost? Thanks so much for the resub, my friend. Commandos! Not even close. Easiest game of my life. Are there snacks in here? <laughs> 